Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to Gunpla News, episode 36 for February of 2018. I didn't do a Gunpla News episode last month uh, because I was just very busy. As you guys know, my daughter was born, so that's the big point of news for me. Got a new baby daughter now, uh, Lumi. She's doing very well, so thank you for all the well wishes you guys have been sending me. Uh, I've been a little bit busy with that, as you might imagine. But uh, let's get on with it today. I'm going to be going over the news. As usual, we'll have five parts. Uh, first part is just some news related to the anime and Gundam related things. Second part is the new announcements, which we have quite a lot of, thanks to the new series that has been announced. Uh, the third part is going over some updates and stuff that we knew was coming out. The fourth part, I've had to keep track of what my number is counting there, yeah, right? Uh, fourth part is going over some third party and resin stuff, not a whole lot of that, again, Today and the last part is some features. So I actually have quite a lot of those. So I actually might not go through all the ones that I have on my list here. I um, might save a few for next time. We'll see how it goes. It's gonna take quite a long time, I think, to go through all of the new announcements for this month. So we'll get into that. If you guys missed my previous video uh, before this one, I did a video talking about some uh, new giveaways and contests and news and some stuff that I wanted to talk about related to my channel. Uh, there was quite a lot of that, so I didn't put that in this month's Gumplin News video, but if you did miss that video, go back and check that one out as well, because there's a lot of uh, good information. Again, this contest or uh, uh, giveaway related stuff in there as well, so make sure you catch that. Uh, but anyway, let's get into it. Obviously, the biggest point of news is that we got a new series uh, announced. It's sort of new. It's kind of like Build Fighters Season 3, basically, but they changed it up a little bit. It's called Gundam uh, Build Divers. It's a new series that's going to be starting uh, this spring. I didn't catch if they gave an actual starting date for that, but uh, I think in April, I want to say. But anyway, a few days ago, Bandai had a live event where they showed off... Uh, the start of that and they showed off all the new kits and everything related for that. We even have like some of the box art for a bunch of the first kits already so we'll talk about that all in the kit announcements section but uh, basically what it is is that people uh, dive into the Gumpla Battle Nexus Online or the GBN uh, which is just like an online network sort of like VR chat I guess where people go in and they have their own avatars so actually you saw in the ad in like uh, in the prologue episode that is available to watch online now that like a few of the members had like uh, like furry avatars and that's been kind of like a big issue on Facebook people been talking about like oh there's furries in Gumpla now yeah it's it's just an online avatar but there's still ver furries in the Gundam universe now whether they're avatars or real people I guess if they're not real people then they're not really furries if, but anyway the fan art for those is some people are gonna love and some people not so much I feel like but anyway just like with build fighters it's just a simulated simulated experience of uh, fighting Gundams basically fighting the kits that they've built that's the thing that I haven't it wasn't really very clear. I guess they're using the kits that they've built in real life in the VR simulation, but they can manufacture their own avatar as a pilot, so are they able to just manufacture their kit just based on whatever they design? They don't have to actually build the kit as in with Build Fighters. I don't know. I guess it's like with Build Fighters, they're actually building the kit and then maybe there's some sort of like, so they scan it into the, the simulation, into the... Uh, uh, Battle Nexus, I guess. So I don't know exactly how that works, but it's sort of interesting, I guess. I think Bandai clearly wants to continue making a shitload of money uh, off of Build Fighters, but they didn't want to just do the same thing again. So props to them for not just doing another season of Build Fighters, of changing it up a bit. So I'm glad about that. I do kind of wish, of course, that they went for something a little bit more original, whether it's making an entirely new animated series like uh, Iron Blood Orphans was, something like that, or uh, a anime adaptation of a manga like Crossbone or something like that. I'm sure I'm not alone in wishing that they would have done something along those lines, but I'm sure there's plenty of people who are excited to see more of this. Build Fighters and I'm sure Build Divers will also not be bad. It's cool to see all the cameos of all the different mobile suits and everything like that. Some of the kits are really nice, although most of them are, of course, using uh, base kits that are a little bit older ones, and it depends. Some of them are older than others. But we do know already that they have uh, more than 20 HD kits planned already, and a new build custom set to be coming out each month. So we've got a lot of stuff coming in uh, from this series. Uh, no word yet as to whether we'll see any master grades or real grades or anything like that from the series yet. I'm sure we probably will, but um, they haven't announced any of that yet. Maybe they're waiting to see like which of the HD kits sell the best first before they decide you know, where to go with a Master Grade or something like that. I'm sure they've probably got some initial plans already going for like some of the main suits, probably. 
but they may be just kind of testing to see which ones uh, the fans are most uh, hyped about. So yeah, it's pretty interesting. I watched the prologue episode, and it's just, it's build fighters, but just a little bit different, but it's, uh, it was fun, it was cool. Of course, the fight scenes are really cool. Like I said, I just really like seeing the cameos of all the different mobile suits. We saw a whole bunch of stuff in there. The Taurus was cool to see. And with us getting the HG Leo out, it kind of makes me hopeful that we might someday see an HG Taurus. But just because a particular mobile suit makes a cameo in the series doesn't mean anything that they will actually will get a kit of it or anything. It's just kind of wishful thinking. But like I said, there's a whole bunch of kits already announced, so we'll talk about that more uh, shortly. just want to move on with a few more points of news here. The Master Archive Mobile Suit Victory Gundam uh, book is coming in March for 2800, so the Master Archive book series uh, are beloved by a lot of people because they're really awesome books, especially if you're into like uh, more technical sketches and things like that. Some really cool artwork in those books usually, so uh, that'll be out. 2800 yen, not too bad either. That's about uh, $25 for that. It's all in Japanese, of course, but it's going to be 128 pages. Um, I haven't seen if that's available. I think last time I checked on HLJ, it's not available for pre-order, but I did see it announced, so I'm assuming that will be coming up for pre-order pretty soon, if it's not already by the time you guys are seeing this video. And the last thing is not new this month, but I just wanted to remind you guys that the Gundam Ace magazine for June of 2018 uh, is including the uh, long-range beam rifle that's meant to be used with the uh, HG Gundam The Origin FSD Gundam. Uh, so it's the June issue, but it's going to be coming out. That issue actually comes out in April. It'll come out two months ahead of time. But anyway, I talked about that before. It's a really cool-looking weapon. We did get some new images of that, and... I haven't quite decided if I really want to get it or not. I, I like it, but I'm probably not that it's into it that I'm going to actually get one. As I mentioned when I talked about this the first time, when you order these magazine exclusives like that, they usually cost... The base price is not that much, but the international shipping is a lot because the books that they're attached to are quite heavy. So you end up paying, if it's like a 900 yen book, which I think this is something like that, uh, you end up probably paying closer to 2,000 yen in total for the shipping. It probably costs more just to ship the thing than it does for the thing itself. So in those kind of situations, I'm a little bit more hesitant to order it myself. But that wraps it up for the news uh, for this month. Like I said, I covered a whole bunch of stuff related to my channel uh, personally in the separate video. So again, make sure you check that out. Uh, now let's move on into the announcements. So I'm going to do it a little bit differently. Usually I go through all of like the figures and Converge and Gashapon, things like that first, and then P Bandai and then uh, regular release kits. I'm going to change it up because I just want to talk about all the new Build Divers uh, stuff first. So we're going to be talking about all of the new releases from Gundam Build Divers and then we'll get into P Bandai stuff and then do all the figures and stuff last. So basically it's an opposite order than how I usually do it. Uh, so we'll start off with our kind of lead protagonist suit as it would seem is the HD Build Divers Gundam 00 Diver. Uh, this one's coming out in April for 1,000 yen. So I think we've got like maybe one other kit coming out in March, but most of these are coming out in either April or May for these uh, first round of kits from Build Divers. So the 00 Diver, uh, really low price tag, 1,000 yen. I think that's the exact same price tag of just the regular 00 Gundam kit, which this is very similar to. It does have some new parts in there, which is nice, but it's nice that they've been able to keep the price very low. One thing that was really great about the uh, HDR and Blood Orphans line was that all of the kits were pretty much around 1,000 to 1,400 yen, very cheap. Uh, in this case, though, this is the only one of these new announcements that's this low. The rest of the new kits coming out from Build Divers are around 1,800, 2,000, 2,200 yen. So this is the only one that's particularly very cheap. The rest are you know, the higher end HGs, unfortunately. But uh, it's pretty basic. It's just got, like I said, a few new parts, the new head design. One thing that I've noticed with uh, a lot of the new uh, mobile suits that are coming out from this line, of course, they're based on older kits, but the new parts that are designed for them, particularly the heads, look really nice. Uh, for a lot of these new kits that have uh, new head designs for them, of course, just like variations to the head design from the original, uh, they're all really, really cool looking. So if nothing else, all these new kits have really cool looking heads, uh, and this one included. This one almost gives me a little bit of kind of like a Iron Blood Orphans kind of Astaroth sort of vibe to it, just the shape of the V-fin and everything, it looks a little bit sort of similar to the Astaroth. But otherwise, it's not too different from the regular kit in terms of what you get with it. You just get like a couple swords, and you know, that's really pretty much it. It's pretty basic, but for 1,000 yen, you really can't complain. And I've uh, reviewed the original Double O Gundam, and it's a really nice kit, so that should be pretty cool. The next one is uh, the only kit, I think, on this list that's coming out in March is the HD Build Divers uh, Gundam Age 2 Magnum. So this is uh, one of the 
mobile suits that appeared in the prologue episode that you can watch out now. Um, this one's coming out for 1800 yen, so a little bit more expensive. This one is obviously going to be based on the age 2 normal, I believe. Uh, this one does transform as well, it kind of transforms into a sort of wave rider mode, which looks eh, uh, not really one of the best looking transformations, and so far we've only seen like pictures of it from the top, I'm sure from the bottom it looks like your typical kind of uh, transformed Gundam where it just is like folded up arms and legs and with some wings sticking out and that's kind of it. But it does have that. It's kind of more interestingly though, I like all the clear bits on it and they are like kind of funnel bits that if you saw in the prologue episode, they kind of like are flying around and they do some other different kind of weird stuff. So those would be cool to see. This is probably uh, maybe of the ones that we have announced so far, this would be one of the ones that I'm looking forward to the most. I really like the look of this one. The other thing that I think will be nice is that it's based on an HG Age kit. And a, from my experience, the HG Age kits that I've built are all really nice. So really looking forward to that. Really cool color scheme as well. Love that like a darker color scheme with just like little bits of orange and yellow in there. It looked really cool. This next one is another one that I'm really, really looking forward to is the uh, HG Build Diverse Momo Kapool coming out in May, so a little bit later. Uh, this one as well for 1800 yen, so a little bit more expensive, but this one is an entirely new kit because we, of course, don't have a regular HG Kapool. We do have a 144 scale Kapool kit from the 144 scale no grade line of turn A. Uh, that's actually not a bad kit considering its age and simplicity, but this one, of course, is already leading to speculation as to if we may see a full uh, HG, regular HGUC release of the Kapool. I really, really hope so, but again, it doesn't really mean anything. I don't, from this design of this kit, I really don't know how much of this kit they could also use to making a regular Kapool. It's a, it's, all the elements are there, but everything's different enough. They couldn't reuse the same parts for making a normal Kapool. So anyway, this is a really interesting looking kit. It is like a penguin kapool with a mini regular looking kapool inside of it. Also the color schemes is probably quite interesting. The outside color scheme, the blue, uh, is like similar to the color scheme that it is in Zeta and also Gundam Unicorn, briefly. And then the inner one is green as it appears in turn A. So that's cool is how they kind of integrated both color schemes there into the one kit. And of course it has the penguin motif going on there as well. So very cool. Also sort of looks like something out of like Final Fantasy or something like that. So it's got a kind of very interesting uh, aesthetic to it. I like it quite a bit. It's, it's cool. It's different. The next one here is another one that appeared in the prologue episodes, HG Build Divers Grimoire Red Bray. Uh, this one is out in April for 1800 yen again. Uh, this one is just obviously a modified version of the Grimoire. I think probably a lot of people would say the Grimoire was one of the best HG kits to come out of Reconquista NG. A lot of those HG kits were not very good, uh, but people seem to generally like the, the Grimoire. Uh, I never built one, but I, I had been meaning to try one out just because I've heard good things, but now I can have a chance. It's obviously not the exact same kit, but slightly different. The red head is uh, kind of not really to my particular taste. The uh, Some people were saying that it seems like it's kind of like a callback to Dugram, that, or Votoms. So with the color scheme, the sort of militaristic look and style of it, it it's, does sort of have similar aspects to that, especially with like the red shoulder on it. But it does come with some cool stuff. Uh, the On the front of its legs now, it has these like big folding claw vice things that pop out, knives things. On the front toe, it's got like a front toe and the back of the foot, it's got like wheels on there for skating around. And the front toe wheel also like rotates around. It's got a little knife on there as well. Uh, in the backpack too, it has its backpack and inside the backpack, it has like two kind of funnels, I guess, sort of is what they are. They're two extra heads of the Grimoire and they have like other little stuff underneath the head, like little manipulator arms, things, I guess, so like when they're flying around, they can do stuff. But yeah, those uh, two extra Grimoire funnel heads uh, fit into the backpack, which is pretty cool. And overall, it looks like a pretty nice, solid kit with some really interesting gimmicks and all that built into it, so I'm actually quite excited about that as well. Again, the stock color scheme of that is not really to my particular taste, but uh, given a new color scheme, it could be a pretty interesting looking, cool kit. Uh, moving on, this one we haven't seen in animation yet, but is the HG Build Divers Gym 3 Beam Master. So this is obviously a modified uh, HGUC Gym 3. This one's out in April as well for, again, 1800 yen. Some cool stuff. This uh, does come with the Changeling Rifle, which plugs into its side skirts, which looks pretty cool. Sort of similar to like the Buster Gundam or something, where, where, like kind of combines to make a big larger gun. The Changeling Rifle is going to be sold separately as a separate uh, build custom set. We'll talk about that here again in a minute. 
This one as well, just a really cool looking sort of like ace grunt suit sort of with that bright orange color scheme and the modifications to just the standard uh, Gym 3 design. It's very cool. I like the parts that they've kept from the Gym 3 and I like the parts that they've changed of the Gym 3. So this one as well, as much as I love like all orange, I love that color and I like the design for some reason just looking at the kit right now, I'm not really loving the combination of that color and that design. So while I love both elements separately, uh, I'm not super sold on this kit yet uh, at this point, but I think painting this up in some different colors, uh, it could make for a really cool looking HD. The Gym 3 is a kit that I've heard very good things about, but I've never gotten around to building one, so I assume that one will be pretty nice. It's not that old, just a few years old now. The next one here, though, is the HD Build Divers CeraVe Gundam Scheherazade. Hope I'm pronouncing that even a little bit close would be nice. That's out in May for 2200 yen. Definitely a little bit more expensive for this one because as you can see, you're getting a lot of plastic in there. It's basically like the Cerebi Gundam plus the Ptolemaeus? Ptolemus? Ptolemus? That ship from Double O. Uh, basically, if they combined like the model of that ship and the model of the 144 scale Cerebi, this is what you get. So it's pretty interesting. This one also has a lot of gimmicks built into it. The the like GN drives on the back skirt can like plug onto the bottom of the feet to like make the legs longer. Like two of the ship containers can like mount onto the arms and they make like these like claw things on there. And it's got that really cool looking gun. I really like that uh, sort of like rocket launcher, grenade launcher sort of big gun that it has on its arm. So I like this one as well. And again, for this one, I really love that head design on this one. It looks really cool. Even the colors on this one, it's got, of course, the colors of the ship is kind of white and like light blue. And they work pretty well for the design of this Gundam. So one theme that I think I'm seeing starting to evolve here is that uh, where this is kind of doing a little bit better than what Build Fighters did is that it's not just taking like older kits and then revamping them with new parts and an updated kind of new take on the design, but it's really trying to give them a lot more in the way of gimmicks as well to the kits. So Build Fighters did that, of course, with some of their kits, but I think this one is, is really kind of focusing on, on the gimmicks built into these, so that's a pretty cool thing. All right, one more new HD Build Divers kit here is the Ogre GNX. This one is another really interesting one. This one's out in May for 2,000 yen. It's basically a combination of the Age 1 Titus and the GNX, and it's a very odd, interesting uh, combination. And it has the color sort of like of the Exia Dark Matter, like a really dark, like deep red and sort of blackish. This one looks a little bit more like kind of purple, actually like really dark purple, but really interesting color scheme. There's aspects of this design that I really like and some parts that I don't really like quite as much. The lower legs, it's kind of similar to like the Rowway in a, in a way, and just not really a big fan of the shape of the lower legs, uh, but a lot of the design is quite interesting. And of course it has all the little beam effects from the Titus in there for the shoulders and like around the hand as well. So you have all of that built into it. And what I really love is those new beam axes that it has. It has these like big, huge, long beam axes that look really, really cool. And of course they can, the two of them can be combined together to make a double beam axe thing there. So that's a really cool looking weapon. That one is sort of, so it looks in a way sort of similar to the uh, beam axe used by the Space Jehanim in Reconquista and G. This one as well, I'm quite looking forward to. So I gotta say like, well, with all of these new HG Build Divers kits that we have announced, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, full HG kits that we have announced already, I have to admit, uh, none of them I'm like really super duper excited for. Like, I really can't wait to build that. But on the other hand, I'm pretty excited for like, all of them actually in a way. They're all pretty interesting and quite unique. So I'm I'm pretty sold on that. Of course, like I, like I said earlier in the video, um, it would be nice to have something that's completely new, but if we are going to keep getting more Build Fighter stuff, it's it's pretty nice that uh, the stuff does look pretty interesting. All right, so of course we have the Build Customs packs. Again, as I said, we have them scheduled to be coming out once every month. So we have a, a few of them actually, and a couple of them out uh, at, in April. There's actually gonna be three out in April. Uh, I guess that's just to start it off, and then after April, maybe it's just once one a month after that, or I don't know. But the first one here is the one that's coming out later in May, is the Diver Ace unit. Uh, this one's in May for 700 yen. It's basically just the swords and backpack, uh, basically, that you get with the double O diver, I guess. It has a couple clear parts, it looks like, on the swords. I imagine in the full kit that maybe those are clear, and then in the HG Build Custom set that maybe those are not clear, sort of like what they did with the 24th Century Weapons and the Cherdom Gundam Saga, how in the Cherdom Gundam Saga, the Parts for the rifles were clear, and the parts that they were just 
uh, regular gray plastic. Uh, could be, but it's kind of hard to tell from the photos at this point. Anyway, there is the HD Build Custom uh, Diver Gear. This one is out in April. And this is just a new base, basically, for that. Kind of how with uh, Build Fighters, they made the uh, GP base, a special base for that. This one is the Diver Gear. Anyway, name aside, it's pretty cool looking uh, action base. It uses the same arm from the action base 4 and 5, the new action base arm. And then at the bottom, it just has this cool uh, triangle shape with that kind of clear blues part there in the center with uh, once you add in some LEDs to that, it could look very cool. As far as I know, because we obviously don't have this out yet, uh, they're, they're, they haven't integrated a way for you to be able to uh, use like a Bandai LED unit in that or something. I don't really know how they would because it's kind of a wide space and the Bandai LED unit is just one little thing. But if they later on made some sort of like add-on part that maybe you like connect underneath the bottom of that, that does a project light up through the bottom of that base, that would be really cool. I kind of doubt that they will do that, but I would hope that they do. And next here is the Build Custom Tilt Rotor Pack. Uh, this one's out in April for 800 yen. And basically, this is kind of, as it's shown in the photos, sort of meant for the Grimoire Red Beret, but you can use it for whatever, of course. It's its own little, like, helicopter-looking thing. Uh, and then it can be attached onto the back of different mobile suits. So if you wanted to make something with the helicopter backpack, now you can. This as well, people have pointed out, it looks very similar to um, something that's used in the Dugram series. It has a helicopter backpack sort of similar to that. The first thing that I thought of was the uh, Heavy Arms Demselfly. Uh, has a heli backpack. It's obviously not quite the same as this one, but you could do something sort of similar to that. Uh, the next thing here is the Build Custom Changeling Rifle, which I mentioned before, uh, coming with the GM3. This one is out in April as well for 600 yen. It's basically just a rifle weapon, and you have six different parts, uh, the six different kind of barrel types that you can use for that. I think two of them are actually like blades, uh, and then the other four would be sort of different things, uh, different kind of gun barrels for that, depending on which kind of gun you wanted to go for. Uh, it seems like it's only coming with one handle, but uh, again, I'm not sure at this point, based on what we've seen of it so far, it would be nice if it came with two handles and then the six different parts, so you could actually have two of them, you can make a little bit more out of that, but we'll have to see. Anyway, those different options for that do look pretty cool. The thing with that, though, is it's nice to have all the different options, but then once you make it, you have all the leftover option parts that, like, then what do you do with those? I guess you can use them for, like, some custom build or something, I guess, but that's the double-edged sword of having a lot of options in kits like this, so... Uh, that's it for the build custom sets. We do have a couple new uh, Petite Guy things as well. The HD Petite Guy Karagai Momo out in May for 900 yen. So Momo is obviously a new character from the series. I think she is the pilot or the user, uh, I guess diver, what would you call her, of the uh, Momo Kapool. Obviously, he shares the same name, so that would be my guess. Uh, so yeah, new Kara guy. I was kind of expecting Bandai to not ever do any more of those, but here we're getting one more. And here we're also getting an HG Petite Guy Diver Blue and Placard. So we're getting, uh, once again, another new Petite Guy here, just in blue. With the placard, it's the exact same petite guy that we've seen before with the placard, just in, in blue this time, so nothing really too exciting there. But the really most exciting thing that we got announced is if we're finally getting some Bandai model kits of Haro. They're not like really too crazy, like if we got like a Master Grade or something would be pretty cool. If you imagine like something on the level of like the Master Grade ball with all the really cool internal inner frame and everything like that. But it's still pretty cool. It's the uh, Haro Pla, they're calling it, and there's kind of three colors for like the main ones here. We have the shooting orange, diva red, and regular green. Regular green sounds kind of boring, kind of a little bit, show a little bit disrespect to the original Haro, but these are going to be out in April for 500 yen each, so also very cheap. Those are going to be, I guess, probably similar to like the petite guys, just very few parts, pretty small, and just very simple, but they do have an inner kind of inner frame, inner details, you can kind of take off the front faceplate of it, and there's a whole bunch of detail and stuff inside. Of course, you'll you'll have to do all the painting of that, uh, but it is really cool they integrated that into it. It does come with a little base as well, and of course, like with the petite guys, it's like kind of puzzle piece shaped, sort of. You can kind of connect them together if you collect them, a bunch of them. It has the arms and the legs which pop out, or you can just keep it in just its ball form, so these look great. These are really cool. It's nice that Bandai is finally making something like this for Haro. Haro has been a thing that's been in a lot of Gundam series for a long time. So it's nice to see Haro getting some love and those are going to be really cool. I'm sure those are going to be similar to the Exceed Zaku heads where we're just going to see all sorts of amazing little customs that people are doing, just having fun like painting those up, weathering those uh, in all sorts of different uh, styles and colors and everything like that. 
uh, just because there's small, cheap, little fun little projects to do. So I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, those. I'm going to get uh, really enjoy having a lot of those. Uh, and then there's one other pink variation that's a little bit different. This is uh, this one is a little bit more expensive and out in May for 600 yen. It's just we don't have the official name for it right now. It's just a pink variation. But this one has uh, kind of animal ears on it instead. So it's just going to be like the addition of a couple more parts added for that. Uh, I don't know in particular what animal that is meant to be, but it's cat or something. But yeah, if you wanted a little Haro with ears, I'm guessing that's something that is going to appear in the Build Divers series probably, and that's why uh, we're getting that one out as well. So that's it for Build Divers. A lot of really cool stuff coming out. Like I said, no word as far as any master grades or anything like that yet, but I'm sure that will probably be coming a little bit later. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff to look forward to, I think. All right, so let's get into the P-Bandai stuff that has been announced, the P-Bandai Master Grade Transam Double O Gundam Seven Swords G Special Coding Version out in April for 12,000 yen. These Master Grade Special Coding Kits, they really jack up the price for that special coding. It's got to be some really super special coding. Uh, but yeah, it's this uh, Transam Double O Gundam Seven Swords G Special Coding. Get it while it's hot, I guess. P Bandai Mash Grade Trans Am Double O Quanta special coding version as well, also coming out in April uh, for a little bit cheaper this time, 10,000 yen. If you can call that cheaper, it's slightly cheaper anyway than 12,000 yen, uh, but it's certainly not cheap. It is cool looking though. Again, if you're a big Double O fan, those are pretty cool. Next thing here is a P Bandai RE100 Gun Cannon uh, Detector Zeta MSV version. So this is uh, the regular version of the Gun Cannon Detector that's coming out later this month is in dark blue. This is the version that is in bright red. So that's pretty much the only difference. This is out in April for 3,800 yen. There are a couple little tiny differences that it, really, it took me a long time to find because <laughs> they're very, very slight differences. Uh, the part inside the side skirt is a little bit different. The part around the head is a little bit different. And that's pretty much it. That's really all I could find. Some people were saying that some part on the leg is different as well. I hadn't, I can't find that though, so I don't know. Basically, it's just a red version of the gun cannon detector. Uh, yeah, I'm really, I'm really looking forward to that kit. Uh, this is the regular version, but I don't really see. I mean, obviously, if you don't paint, then cool, you can get a red one, but um, not really too much appeal uh, for that one. I think if if you do paint, uh, P Bandai RG Black Tri Stars High Mobility Type Zaku Two. So this one was actually I think announced in December or something, but I couldn't get to. It was announced after my last episode of Gunplay News, so. Uh, uh, th this has been announced for a while, but I just haven't had a chance to talk about it yet. So basically, just like with the Shin Matsunaga version, it's just the a recolor of the high mobility type real grade Zaku, and then it comes with a set of stickers for that for making it into the black Tri Stars version. And again, stickers, not water slide decals. If you want the water slide decals, you have to get the uh, set. I think the the Bandai official set uh, does come with those, maybe, or maybe that was just for Johnny Ridden and Shin Matsunaga. Maybe they don't have the official. RG Black Tri Stars set coming out for that, but maybe in the future. Anyway, this is out in March very soon for 3,000 yen, and there is also a triple set that's going to be available. The triple set is 9,000 yen, so you're thinking like, oh, what's the difference? You just buy three of the regular one, 9,000 yen, or buy the triple set, 9,000 yen. It's exactly the same, but the triple set does include something else. Extra, it also includes a triple action base, so it is a action base one of the new action bases um, at the base, but the arm is like a new uh, triple connection arm. It's a cool, it's a really cool looking thing. Uh, I like that triple connection arm. It would be really cool to use for stuff like this or any sort of other thing that you wanted to have like three mobile suits on one action base at the same time like that. Not sure of the stability, but 144 scale kits should be okay, but uh, that does look really cool. So that does give you a little bit of incentive to buy the triple set if you wanted. Still though, wish the triple set would have also maybe included some water slides. Just an idea, anyway. Uh, P Bandai HD Iron Blood Orphans Graze a Shield and a Graze, the Iron Rod custom set. So, this is a set of two HD Graze kits, and uh, one of them is just totally the same. Uh, and the other one does come with some new parts, or I guess basically you just get two Grazes and one set of new parts. The new parts are a new kind of halberd weapon and a big new shield, and then a couple new parts for the head. It has like this kind of extra thing going around the head. It's cool, the new parts are nice, uh, but for this, it's uh, 3,000 yen for this out in April. 3,000 yen is a little bit high. You do also get some of the parts from the option set. You get the Grey's um, Bazooka 
uh, are shoulder parts as well as the gray is a shield. Those were included with option parts, so you get those packed in with this as well. Otherwise, this is just recolored into the Aaron Rod custom colors here. It's just like really dark green with red. I can assume all the red on that kit will be just stickers. So the big red stripe down the middle of the shield, the red on the top of the head is just all going to be just red stickers for that. So I'm kind of on the fence because I do really like the, the new parts that are included with this, but otherwise uh, it's does seem like a little bit of a waste as many people have been saying online and I agree with this really should have been released as just a part set even if it's P-Bandai I mean P-Bandai or not I don't really care about that but just kind of like just release it as just a part set or maybe have that option as well release it as two things P-Bandai as like the full set with the kits and the parts and then just just the parts um you know but of course that's just one man's opinion and that really doesn't have any weight to it. <laughs> Bandai is gonna do whatever they want. So at the moment I'm on the fence. I kind of like that and kind of want to get that, but at the same time, I don't know. Uh, next thing here is the P Bandai HGUC Crossbone XO X Zero XO. What do you guys call it? Anyway, this one is out in April for 2,300 yen. So this is just uh, yet another HG Crossbone variation kit. This one is in silver. It does come with the new weapon. This one also does come with the same uh, kind of cloak for that, which is just awful, just terrible. They do a really good job making it look good in the promo images, but in real life, it does not look good at all. And so if you watched my review, I did a review of the X1 Kai, I believe that also came with that kit, also came with that uh, cloak. And yeah, it doesn't look very good. Uh, but some cool weapons included with that. Of course, it has uh, a whole bunch of different weapons and things that you can do with that. So it's uh, the HG Crossbone kits are really nice. Uh, and this is a new version of that. I'm just sad that it doesn't have the fog effect parts. Um, still hoping for a nice Crossbone Ghost or Crossbone Phantom kit that will have all the cool fog effect parts and everything, like with the Next Edge figures. A couple more P Bandai items here. HG The Origin Actazaku, uh, February, coming out to this month in February for 2000 yen. This one as well was, was announced before, so um, I wouldn't talk about this because it's coming out this month, but just because of the fact that I didn't get the chance to talk about it before. Uh, the regular Actazaku, the Cassilius Forces version, uh, is, has, is out, and I will be reviewing that for you guys soon. I've got it just over there. Uh, but this version is like the original Akizaku, it's just all in blue, and this one has a couple different parts in the way of, it has a new weapon, it's a new gun that looks very kind of similar to like the gun that the Marasai uses actually, it's sort of similar in its design, and it also comes with the two beam sabers that also look sort of similar to like the Dom's heat sabers, but uh, these are like actual beam effect parts, so a few different parts added for this, it's a pretty cool design, I, I really like the look of the Akizaku. Oh, of course, the shoulders are different on this one as well. That's the most obvious thing. The shoulders are, are a different style on this. So it's a pretty cool looking kit overall. Oh, this one does have a different backpack on it as well. So actually quite a few new parts on it. It's pretty pretty nice variation. Not bad. Uh, the bright blue color and the big red and yellow obnoxious 2 right down the, cro right down the crotch is uh, pretty dumb looking. But uh, it is a pretty nice looking kit overall. I think going to paint it up in a different color scheme could look pretty good. Alright, and the last two things here are a couple of P-Bandai Build Fighters kits, the P-Bandai HG Build Fighters Tall Strike Gundam Glitter. What a name, what a name for that. That is out in March for 1800 yen and is sort of like a mix of the Build Strike and the H2 Double Bullet, sort of, like in the, the way that it looks. So that's kind of interesting. It's got two little handguns for all the little pew pew action and it's got a really interesting looking head. I'm not really too into it, but it's a very interesting head design on that one. Um, and then, yeah. And the last P-Bandai thing here is the HG Build Fighters Gundam M91. So this is a variation of the F91, as you could tell from the name. This one also out in March as well for 1800 yen. Very interesting, unique weapon that this one has though with like the gold sort of similar, looks looks very similar to like the uh, real grade Shinanju where it's kind of like the gold with the black inlaid in it. That's what it looks like anyway. But I'm going to guess that's actually just a black sticker over a gold part is what I would imagine. But this, this one as well, love that huge long V fin that it has. It's really cool. I like that quite a bit. But um, so there are some really interesting parts to this kit, I think. It has a cool, cool like things on the backpack as well. Um, 
Of course, it has its normal uh, F91 stuff with the cannons on the side skirt and just the beam rifle, the kind of standard stuff. But very interesting looking weapon, to be sure. That's, it's quite unique. Uh, so this, the M91 and uh, the Tall Strike Gundam uh, as well, I think are both from the Amazing Ready manga, I believe. So that's why those just came out as just P-Bandai kits, not as uh, full, full release kits. <sighs> full release. All right, so moving on, we have a couple of uh, Gundam base. Tokyo limited exclusive kits coming out as well that were announced. The HGUC Zeta Gundam Theory, Zeta Gundam Unit 3, coming out for 2200 yen. This, uh, the Zeta Gundam Unit 3 is a very common uh, variant uh, that has been released as Gundam Base Limited, where they've done it with like the real grade, the Master Grade 2.0, and maybe the Master Grade 2.0, maybe not actually, but definitely with the real grade anyway. And this one is using the new Revive or Gunpla Evolution Project version of the HGC Zeta, uh, so you'll be able to get that. The other thing oh, that does also come with the with a new base for that uh, as well, the Gundam Base Limited base. Uh, so, uh, the next thing here is something that does look really cool, I'm actually really excited for this, is the HG uh, Unicorn Gundam Luminous Crystal Body version out uh, now, actually the, the Zeta as well is also out now, uh, but the Unicorn is out now as well for 3,000 yen. This looks really cool because it's the first time that Bandai has done a Unicorn kit showing the, like, the crystal effect that you can see in the last episode of Gundam Unicorn, and it looks really good. I've seen plenty of like custom builds where people have tried to recreate that, and it never looks quite right, but this one looks really good. I really wish they did this with a master grade, but with the high grade, it's not bad either. The rest of the kit does also have a little bit different colors molded to that, so like the inner frame uh, has a much very obvious like green tint to that. Even the white parts as well, it's like slightly green tinted. Uh, in the white and so all of that it's, it all has this full green sort of look to it. This does also come with a base as well. It comes with like a black sparkly clear uh, ac action base 5. So that's nice as well. Overall this looks like a really cool kit. I'm hoping to get this and uh, review that for you guys because I really like the look of this so hopefully you guys will be seeing this here on my channel in the near future. One more kind of exclusive thing to talk about here is a Bathing Ape Custom Master Grade RX-782 Gundam version 3.0. So Bathing Ape is obviously a clothing brand, Bape, or just Ape. Um, I haven't seen the official price for this, but I've seen it for sale from other proxy sellers for around $80, which is pretty high, but for a kind of brand clothing company custom version exclusive of a master grade kit doesn't really seem that crazy. So I guess this is uh, going to be on sale first at the Hong Kong Ape store and then later as a P Bandai online item is what I've heard. There is also going to be an SDX standard Baby Milo Gundam as well. This one I've seen is going to be around $40. That's pretty insane for a SDX standard kit which are less than $10. And so that's like more than four times the price of that. That's pretty crazy. This one does actually come with a new part or a couple new parts anyway in that. So that is maybe something. It has the, the monkey face uh, instead of the Gundam face. So it that's something. And also it is just a, a limited exclusive thing. So that price is pretty insane though. So any of those are coming out if you're interested. They're, they've got like uh, decals in there for you to be able to put on the camo over some of the armor parts, that green camo, so it's kind of interesting looking. All right, so no news about a new high-resolution model kit yet, but we do have a new version of the high-resolution Wing Gundam Zero Custom EW, and that is the pearl coating version of that. So like with many other versions of the Wing Gundam Zero that we've had in the past, Bandai has put out a pearl coating version as well, so with the high-res, here we're getting that in March for 20,000 yen, so very expensive, but, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a cool looking kit. I think that that kit looks much, 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 much better once it's painted. Uh, but if you're into the pearl coating look for that, then that'll be out soon enough. Then at the beginning of January, Bandai updated their uh, display there at the Gundam base and they had all this new stuff on display and people went nuts, including myself. I did a Twitch live stream talking about uh, just all the new stuff that was shown at that time. Uh, unfortunately, that Twitch live stream was not saved, so unless you watched it live, then you missed it. But uh, so there's a bunch of stuff here that I'm going to mention uh, a little bit later that was shown at the Gundam base, but we don't have any official confirmation about that yet. So those kits, uh, I'll let you know. And those kits, basically, we don't know for sure that they will be coming out, but the prototypes have been shown, so we just kind of don't really know at this point. Nothing is confirmed. So that goes for this first kit I'm going to talk about, and that's the Master Grade Gundam F91 version 2.0. So it's just a 
2.0 of the F91 Gundam. We don't have any official information for this yet, uh, but the prototype is there. It looks fine. I don't think the original Master Grade F91 Gundam is something that a lot of people were clamoring to get a 2.0 version of exactly, because I don't really, from what I've heard, it's not a bad kit by any means. So I uh, don't really quite understand that one, but uh, I would say a Master Grade kit, a Master Grade kit, uh, because they take much more engineering uh, than a standard high grade, if they're showing a prototype, it's probably very likely that they are going to push ahead with that, but we have had instances before where they've shown uh, prototype Master Grade kits and then they've not come out. Uh, but this other Master Grade here is definitely coming out. This is the Master Grade Banshee Verka, uh, coming out in March for 5,400 yen. Now, this kit was previously available as a P-Bandai kit and it has been re-released many times. Uh, this was a P-Bandai kit of the Master Grade Banshee Verka uh, Final Battle version. So it was basically the uh, original Verka Unicorn Gundam, so it doesn't have the different uh, chest piece. It has the different V-fin for the Banshee, but it doesn't have a different chest piece, a uh, different color piece for the Banshee, so it's a little bit kind of different looking. And it also doesn't have the armed armor parts for it, so it's just basically the Unicorn with a different V-fin and different colors. That's pretty much it. The really great thing about the original P-Bandai kit, and now this release as well, is that it's coming with a set of really nice looking gold uh, water slide decals for that. So with it being a Master Grade Verka kit, it's coming with some nice water slides, and in this case, they're just a beautiful looking gold color, so that's pretty nice. And as I mentioned, the original P-Bandai version uh, was the final battle version, so it was a green inner frame. This one, though, is going to be in just the regular uh, orange inner frame version. So if you, for example, maybe had the full armor Unicorn Gundam kit, where you have all of the green inner frame parts from that, you could just switch that and make your own uh, version of the uh, P-Bandai Banshee Verka final battle version by just switching the inner frames, then you could have an orange inner frame full armor unicorn Gundam, that'd be kind of interesting. But anyway, one question that I've got is if they've uh, updated the parts because with the original unicorn Verka and then the OVA version, they updated a couple of parts like in the legs especially uh, to just increase some of the articulation there. So that was kind of the thing of that. And so while this is still a Verka, I would assume this is using uh, the new leg parts from the OVA version Unicorn, probably. And speaking of the Banshee, this month we do have the real grade Banshee Norn coming out, uh, but I've talked about that in the past. But one thing that I didn't get a chance to talk about before is the real grade uh, Gundam Unicorn Band Dessine version. So this one is also coming out this month at the same time, but it was kind of uh, announced very late and now it's coming out right away. But this is just the real grade Gundam Unicorn and it comes with the parts to make the uh, Armed Armor DE shield for that. So basically in the Band Destiny version, the Unicorn has the Armed Armor DE shield. So it's basically the exact same kit as the real grade Unicorn with the addition of just a few more parts. I like this picture that shows the new parts that you get with this kit and it's just like one, two, three little bits that's added to the kit. But yeah, if you want to have that, if you want to have a, a big Armed Armor DE shield for your Unicorn Gundam, it's a cool chance to get that, but again, that's out this month for 4,000 yen, so just a little bit more than just the standard price kit, as you would imagine. But the new real grade was announced, that one is going to be coming out in May for 2,500 yen, is the Tall Geese EW. So, uh, as I've said, I think in uh, when I when I originally talked about this on Twitch, and as I've talked about in our last episode of Gumplin News, uh, I, I just don't really, I can't really get too excited about this kit because I feel like I don't know what is going to be gained by basically making a 144 scale version of the Master Grade, and that's pretty much what this looks like. A lot of times with the real grade kits, uh, what they have that they might, maybe the Master Grade very, very Master Grade versions don't have, sorry, is they have like uh, different details or different part separation. They have, in many times, more part separation than their Master Grade counterparts. So they just kind of, uh, in general, are a little bit different. But for the most part, this looks very, very similar in terms of its kind of overall construction to the Master Grade Tall Geese. So it's basically just the same kit, shrunken down to 144 scale. Now, maybe if you really prefer 144 scale kits, then that's great, or if of this one is obviously cheaper than the Master Grade, so if you uh, didn't want to spend quite as much money, then that's great. Or if you don't have a whole lot of shelf space, you want something a little bit smaller, then that's great. But just in terms of just the kit itself, I don't really know what new or better it's going to bring to the table. So just for someone like me, uh, between the two, the Real Grade or the Master Grade, I'm just going to take the Master Grade every time, so I don't really see the appeal uh, of the Real Grade. For me personally. I will give it that it does have some additional details in the thruster pods on the backpack, and that looks pretty good. One thing that does not look good, though, is its tree trunk legs. The Master Grade has much more nicer uh, and like thinner 
uh, lower leg. This one is like just a tube, just just straight lower leg is just like a tree trunk and it just like doesn't look good. Every time I look at that kit, that's all I can look at is just straight to the legs and how they're just not. Of course, you could like modify that, just like file that down, sand it down to make it a little bit more shapely. Uh, but that's just a little pet peeve of mine about that kit anyway. Of course, one thing that I think would be cool would be to make like a tall geese flugel by using the real grade uh, wing Gundam's wings onto this kit. That'd be pretty cool. But again, it's something that you can just do with the master grade as well. All right, so moving on to HGUC, we have the HGUC Ground Gundam is out in April for 1700 yen. So considering that the Ground GM came out last year, it's not too big of a surprise that we're getting the Ground Gundam out, as well as the Blue Destiny kits all coming out and all being kind of similar as well. So the Ground Gundam is coming out in April for 1700 yen, and it looks really nice. It looks like a really good kit. The Ground GM was one of my favorite kits from last year. It's a really, really good kit, so this one will be good. As, this one will be good as well. I like that they included that this one has the backpack, the container backpack, and you can store the cannon in there. I think it's a 180 millimeter cannon. I want to say is what that's called. Uh, but it, of course, it uh, it breaks down into parts and can be stored into the backpack. Looks very good. I'm glad that they did that with the kit. It does also come with the regular machine gun and uh, beam rifle that you would expect. So it kind of has everything that you could want in there, I suppose. And then another HG kit that I'm super duper excited for is an HG After Colony Leo. Finally, finally, we're getting a kit of the Leo. I really don't know why Bandai hasn't made a Master Grade Leo using uh, parts of the Tall Geese inner frame. I know they would, they would have to change some of that, but a lot of the Tall Geese uh, Master Grade kit could be used to make a Master Grade Leo. Maybe if the high grade sells really well, we'll have to see, but this is out in May for 1,000 yen. That's the other great thing about this kit. It's only 1,000 yen. Of course, it's a really simple kit, but it's just nice to see that they, they really hooked it up with that really low price point for this. It, of course, it doesn't come with a whole lot of stuff either. It doesn't have like some big elaborate backpack or anything. It just has its machine gun and the shield and the two beam savers, and that's it. And that's pretty simple. Uh, now, the... Will there be P Bandai variants of that? I'm sure it's just a matter of time. I'm sure we'll at least see a space type probably come out as a P Bandai kit. It would be great if it didn't, but it's Bandai we're talking about here. So we'll probably see the purple space type come out as a separate kit at some point. And then I would hope that we would see one that comes with the flight pack and also the uh, shoulder cannons for just the regular green ground version. Now, whether that comes out as like a separate like P Bandai parts set, probably not. Probably just a, a full kit of just the regular Leo with the shoulder cannons and the, the flight pack for that. So really hoping we get some more versions of that, whether they're P-Bandai or not. You know, I, I'd love it if they were not, but I, as long as we get them in some way or another, I'll be happy. So I'm sure those are probably going to be coming out. I think the HG Leo will probably be a very, very good selling kit just because it's been something I think people have wanted for a long time and that low price point, I think it'll probably sell really well. All right, and this is another one that was announced back in December, but I haven't had a chance to talk about it yet. And it is the HG Build Fighters Mrs. Long Rinko. So I think it's a kind of a mix of Rinko and Longgren. Uh, so basically, yeah, this is uh, a, another HG Build Fighters uh, woman, uh, I was going to say girl kit, but uh, woman robot uh, musume kit. And yeah, this is out in March pretty soon for 2700 yen. Not sure if I'm going to bother getting this kit and uh, reviewing it for you guys. You guys just kind of, you guys know what to expect from these kits at this point. They're not that great. If you're really a big fan of how it looks, then they're fine. But me personally, I just don't really like them when I build them. They're just not really the most enjoyable kits to build. They, like, when you're actually, like, trying to pose them or do anything with them, they're not, they don't really look that great. So it's very likely that I will not be reviewing that one for you guys. But it's, it's interesting looking. I know a lot of people love Rinko as a character or just as a character design, I should say. But yeah, it's got kind of like the cool gimmick where she like lays back and her legs become like the front cannons of the ship from uh, Gundam Seed, isn't it? So yeah, uh, let's just hope that that's the last one of these that Bandai does for a while until they like uh, just actually study how Kotobuki does it and try to make their kits more like Frame Arms Girls kits. All right, so here is uh, some of the kits that we saw on display in prototype form at Gundam Base Tokyo, but we don't have any information on them uh, officially in terms of if or when they will actually be released. Fingers crossed on all these because they're all pretty cool. But here they are, the HGUC Gundam Woundwarts. Of course, I really, really want this, and I think everyone's really 
holding their breath uh, to get an official announcement on this because the wound wart would just be so cool. We very, very rarely get anything from Advance of Zeta. So to get uh, something as cool as this would be really fantastic. The hands look pretty ridiculous on this kit, but that's a pretty easy thing to change. Otherwise, the kit in its prototype form does look really nice. Of course, the wound wart's got that super cool design. So I really hope that we do get to see more about that. Uh, also, behind there, and it was kind of just like a shadow, not because of the fact that it's behind the Wound Warp, but just because I think people were much more excited about the Wound Warp, but there was also a Gabaldi Beta there on display as well in 144 scale HGUC form, which does also look really nice. Of course, I'm much more excited about the Wound Warp, but the Gabaldi does look uh, like a really good solid kit as well. Of course, all we're seeing is just the prototype here, but I can imagine that would be a really nice kit, so hopefully that one does come out as well. I love the HGUC kits like that. Another much more obscure one is the Pixie Gundam that was on display there. I, I was really caught by surprise by that. I, I know that Gundam vaguely, but I really don't know all that much about it because it is so obscure. So for that to be on display there was, was quite surprising. So that one, it, that's kind of the one that I have, if I was to say which one I have the most doubt about whether that's going to be coming out, it'd be between the Pixie or the Wound War, and I think there's probably, at this point, a better chance of the Wound coming out than the Pixie, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there is kind of more people that are more excited about the Pixie, but I feel like uh, a lot of people are not going to know what that is, so I don't know. All right, the next thing here is one that I'm really, really hoping for as well. It's the HGUC Goof Flight Type. Uh, there is a 1140... It is HG, yeah, but it's not HGUC. The 144 scale Goof Flight Type does exist, but it's based on a pretty old kit, and it's not that good. I built it years ago, a long, long time before I was on YouTube, so of course I haven't reviewed that for you guys, but hopefully this comes out and I'll get the chance to review it. I actually recently bought a resin conversion kit for turning the Master Grade Goof into a 1-100 scale uh, Goof Flight type, so hopefully I'll get a chance to work on that sometime maybe later this year. Anyway, I love the Goof Flight type uh, design, so I really got my fingers crossed for that one as well. Another one here which is very predictable is the HGC Barlant. It's not predictable that it would be coming out at this time, but it's just predictable that it was only a matter of time before it would be coming out uh, because we have a few other different variations of the HGC Barlant out already, uh, but still no original Barlant, so we finally got a look at that. Uh, hopefully that one will be coming out. Uh, as I've mentioned many times before, that's one of my favorite HG kits that I've ever built. Uh, I love the HGUC Barlant kit. It's a really nice kit and just a really cool, unique kit and quite large uh, as well. So it's a really fun kit to build, so I definitely don't mind building another one of those, even though it has the little baby arms, which I don't really particularly care for. Fingers crossed. And then we have the HGUC Ifrit Noct. Alright, so that's it for all the kit stuff. Now let's get into some of the figure stuff here. Let's try to just uh, get through some of these a little bit quickly. The Metal Build Crossbone Gundam was teased. Uh, we haven't really seen anything except for a teaser image there, and it said something like, this is only the beginning, or something like that. And yeah, it's, it's the beginning of all of the different P Bandai variations of the Crossbone Metal Build kit that are going to be out. We're going to have the Metal Build Crossbone out, and then it's going to be P Bandai Metal Build Crossbone X2, and P Bandai Metal Build Crossbone X3, and all this stuff. Yeah, it's only the beginning, exactly. And speaking of P Bandai variations, the P Bandai Metal Build F91 Gundam Harrison Custom is going to be out in April for 21,000 yen. Uh, that is also not surprising at all when we got the uh, P Metal Build F91 Gundam. I was just waiting for when they were going to announce a Harrison version, and uh, here it is, finally coming out. It's just a dark blue color variation of the F91 Gundam there, so. That'll be out. It would be kind of interesting if they released that actually right around the same time as the Master Grade 2.0, if we would get some more Master Grade uh, 2.0 information anyway. Next, a Metal Robot Damashi Musha Gundam is going to be out in June for 13,000 yen. These, um, this one looks pretty nice. It does come with a cool display stand and of course all the weapons that you would expect from a Musha Gundam. It has like the kind of old style rifle as well as uh, the different like uh, handheld like sword and melee weapons and things like that. And next up in the Robot Damashi version anime line is the Rick Dom and Ball set. This is the set of the version anime Rick Dom and version anime Ball together for 7,400 yen out in June. And there also is also going to be apparently some P Bandai versions of this where you're going to be able to get uh, uh, through the P Bandai online shop. 
uh, a version that comes with two balls instead of just one, or uh, three balls or four balls, so you can get some extra balls in your kit if you want to get the uh, P-Bandai version. Obviously, those are uh, incrementally more expensive based on the number of balls. And then one more Robot Damashi thing. Here is the Robot Damashi Shinanju real-type marking version. This is going to be out in June as well for 7,000 yen. So just a different, slightly different version of the Robot Damashi Shinanju coming out in June. Uh, let's get into some Converge stuff. We had a lot of cool Converge stuff announced. The Converge Psycho Gundam Mark II is going to be coming out in June for 2,800 yen. So really excited for this. This one actually was teased a little bit before, before we got the official announcement, uh, I think on like the Gundam Converge Twitter or something, or like uh, somewhere on Twitter, um, there was a teaser image of that kind of that came out before, so we knew it was coming. So that'll be out in June. Uh, I'll definitely be getting that one. There is also a P Bandai Psycho Gundam Mark II option part set that's going to be coming out in June as well for 2200 yen. I uh, don't think I'm going to be getting this, but what the option set comes with is uh, not only just some option sets for option parts uh, for the Psycho Gundam Mark II, like it has like the uh, uh, funnel arms and the, like with some like beam effect parts coming out of them and. Uh, all of that, but it does also come with a uh, black, or I guess it's dark purple, uh, Kubele Mark II riding on a base jabber. So you can sort of like recreate uh, the anime there with that. So I do really like that. I would really like to have that uh, that dark purple Kubele Mark II, uh, but we'll probably pass on this option set. Maybe next time I'm in Japan, if I come across the option set uh, for relatively cheap, may pick it up, but. Uh, the next thing here is a P Bandai Converge Core Faz. So we have the regular uh, Bandai uh, Converge uh, Full Armor Double Zeta Gunner coming out this month, I believe, and I will be getting that for sure. Uh, but this is the Sentinel version, the Faz, so it has a different color scheme and a couple different parts there of the design. So we're looking forward to this one. We'll be getting this one as well. This one's out in March for 2200 yen. So that'll be probably. Uh, later, maybe in April, that you guys will be seeing that from me because I'm actually having a friend in Japan is helping me get that. And then one more P Bandai here is P Bandai Converge Core Dendrobium. This one is out in May for 3600 yen. Now, I have the original Converge Dendrobium and I did a review of that way back when. Uh, but this new version basically it just has some additional markings, so it just has a bunch more uh, markings pre printed on it, and also some of the colors are a little bit different, so like a lot of like the mechanical. Uh, frame parts and stuff that I think on the original kit are gray. In this kit, they're uh, like a gunmetal metallic painted instead, so it's just slightly different. I like all the extra markings on this one, but I actually kind of prefer just the gray color instead of the metallic uh, gunmetal color. So I think I'm just going to stick with the one that I have, but this does look like a, a cool version of that. And the last thing here is just a teaser of a Gundam Converge Ultron EW. So this one, I am assuming, will probably be coming out in uh, Converge set number 11, which has not been announced yet. But that should probably be announced sometime in the next month or two. And it will be including, looks like, an Ultron EW, which would be really cool. So we've got some other uh, Ultron, we've got some other uh, Wing EW uh, mobile suits out in the Converge line already, and they're really nice. So I'm looking forward to that. So finally, that is it for all of the announcement stuff, and we can just move on and try to get through some of these updates here pretty quickly. All right, so on with the updates. I'm just going to kind of rapid fire through some of these figures and things like that, Robot Damashi, all this stuff. Some of the stuff that we haven't gotten any new information for, I'm just going to skip for the purposes of not making this video extremely longer than it already has to be. The Metal Build Gundam Astray Type F and the P Bandai Metal Build Gundam Astray Type F with heavy weapons with the GN heavy weapon set are both going to be coming out in May, so not too much longer uh, for those to be coming out. There's the Metal Build Gundam Exia 10th Anniversary Package version, that one's going to be coming out in March, so just next month for 30,000 yen. There's the Tamashi Web Shop exclusive Robot Damashi uh, Shinanju Final Battle set coming out in July for 16,000 yen. Uh, important to note for this that the Shinanju is sold separately, this is only the parts for the uh, Neo Zeong and Neo Zeong hands. I will say though that the 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 Neo Zeon parts, especially the hands, do look really, really cool. They come with uh, their own uh, stands for each of those, and you have like the funnel finger. I think you don't have all of the fingers can be their own separate funnels, but uh, it does look like a really cool set for sure. Then we have the Robot Damashi Ka Signature Gundam Mark II Titans version out in May for 8,500 yen. I was expecting that to probably come with like different shoulders that you can swap out for the different numbers, one, two, or three on the shoulder, but I haven't seen that in any of the official images. It looks like it's always just a uh, three 
on the shoulder. Uh, Robot Damashi Unicorn Gundam Awakening Mode, real marking version. Uh, this one's out in April for 8,100 yen. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, we're getting a real, real marking version of the Shinanju coming out that was announced. Uh, but the real marking version of the Unicorn has already uh, been announced for a while. So that'll be out in April. There's the Robot Damashi Gundam uh, Alex version anime out in April for 5,500 yen, as well as a Robot Damashi uh, Zaku 2 FZ version anime uh, out in May. So for fans of War in the Pocket, you get the Alex Gundam and the Zaku 2 FZ. Zaku 2 FZ, uh, probably my least favorite Zaku variation, so I actually don't really like that one, but... Moving on, we have the Next Edge style Crossbone Gundam Ghost out in May for 4,000 yen. Uh, and then a Armor Girls Project Faz out uh, next month in March for 13,500 yen. Love that Faz. And then a P Bandai Mobile Suit Ensemble EX05 Zanuck is going to be out in March for 3,900 yen. That is that very odd looking mobile suit from Gun of Victory, as well as the thing he's kind of riding on there, so you can get that. There's also the G Frame Volume 2. So this was teased before with just a kind of teaser image of just the Zeta Gundam, but now we have the full information on that. It's the Zeta Gundam, the Dom, and the Mudrock. It's a very odd choice. But these are going to be available in April for 500 yen each, or I think you can buy them in a box. Uh, and I think they come with like 10 in a box, so you would have doubles of them. So again, if you guys have missed the explanation of what the G Frame figures are in the past, basically there's two versions of each one. So there's like of the Zeta Gundam, there's just like the basic version where it comes with just like a really simple inner frame, which isn't really all that movable, and all of the armor parts for that. And then there's another version that comes with a uh, much more articulated inner frame, and then it just comes with some extra weapons parts for that. So if you want to have like the full set, you need to get like both ver uh, both kind of sets of each individual kit. So uh, those look pretty interesting. I haven't got one yet to see what they're like, but maybe in the future. There's also the Converge White Base coming out next month in March for 20,000 yen. It's uh, really huge. I, as you guys know, I love Gundam Converge stuff, but this that's just not for me. Even if someone offered to give that to me for free, I would... I would probably decline. It's, it's hard to say. I mean, I love Converge stuff, but I just, it's just too big. It's just way too big. Unless I actually had some space, somewhere to put that. Even if I had somewhere to put that thing, I'm not really sure if I'd really want it, just because I'm not really that big of a fan of just, like, the the design of White Base. Of course, it's very iconic, but it's, just, it's not really for me. Anyway, uh, Converge Series 10 is out in March next month for 5,000 yen with some really cool Gundams in there. The Gundam Epion. Uh, the Gazu R and Gazu L, the Game Alk, which is probably the one that I'm the most looking forward to, the Gun Cannon, and the Shining Gundam as well, so that'll be cool. I think uh, that set, I bought a box of that, which comes with a box of 10. Uh, I'm assuming that I'll get two of the Shining Gundam in that box, so may do a custom painted version of the Shining Gundam as well to go along with my uh, custom hyper mode painted version of the God Gundam, so we'll have to see if that is the case. I do end up with two of those. Um, might as well paint it up, right? Next thing is the uh, P Bandai Exceed model Shara Zaku 2 head with bust set. This one's out next month in March for 4,000 yen. It is just the Exceed head with part of the chest in there as well. It has uh, light and sound gimmicks built into it, so that's kind of cool. And then just a few kits here. This is the P Bandai Perfect Grade Gundam Exia repair parts set uh, coming out in March for 4,000 yen. Uh, I think that's great that Bandai did that as a separate parts set and not as a full-on kit. That's pretty nice of them. And those parts do look pretty cool, I gotta say. And then a couple of kits here. Also, the HG, the Origin, MSD, Gundam FSD, or Full Scale Deployment, as apparently that's what that stands for. This one's out in April for 2200 yen. It's basically just a variation of the Gundam Local Type. And we had the Gundam Local Type, and then we had the Black Local Type, and now we have the FSD version as well. This one does have some cool looking stuff. It has a cool minigun kind of attachment on its arm with like a belt that goes to like an ammo drum on its back skirt. And then it has a cool new shield, a very big shield, which like actually folds up as well, which is pretty cool. Unfortunately, it has some hollow spaces in like the back of the shield that look a little bit unsightly, but it is an HG, so it's kind of not too surprising, but it's a little bit surprising for the Origin line. The HG The Origin line has been really high quality, I think, and that's usually why the kits are a little bit more expensive. Uh, but you don't really see stuff like that where like, you'll see like the hollow gaps in, in some of the parts where you do see that more often in like the Gundam Build Fighters HG line, for example, things like that. But with the Origin kits, it's to see that on an Origin kit is a little bit unfortunate, but 
eh, just throw a little putty in there, sand that down, you would be good to go. And the last thing here is just the HGUC Blue Destiny Unit 3 exam coming out in March next month for 1600 yen. So that one as well. I'm actually kind of looking forward to that. The uh, Blue Destiny Unit 3 is actually my favorite of the three. So I'm looking forward to that one coming out. It's a little bit more different in that it has like the double beam rifle and just a little bit more uh, unique weapons to that. It's not just like the standard weapons that you would get with like the ground type Gundam, which uh, are not boring, but you they're just not as unique. Let's say that. So I'm looking forward to that kit, and that's that's pretty much it. All pretty much all the kits we have coming out uh, in the future uh, were all re just very recently announced in the, like the last six weeks. Uh, as far as stuff that we knew about before that, there's only a few of them coming out other than just the stuff that's coming out this month. So yeah, that's it for all the updates. Now we can move on into a few things here from uh, third-party sellers. One thing that I talked about in the last episode was the 135th scale Shinanju bust coming from uh, Billion Spark company. Uh, the price for this, if you pre-ordered it, was around $100, but if you didn't pre-order it, the price for this is around $125, so very, very expensive. Uh, but it is very large and very complicated. It comes with metal parts, it comes with water slides, it comes with LEDs, and it's quite big. So um, I'm planning to get this. So uh, yeah, hopefully you guys will be able to see me do uh, this kit. I wasn't really all that interested in their 135th scale unicorn bus when that came out, but now that I'm getting the Shinanju, I kind of want the unicorn as well to go with it now. And after seeing Justin working on it, uh, my good buddy there, Justinius, Justinius Builds, uh, recently got one and he painted it up and it looks really, really good. And now I'm thinking I kind of actually want that uh, unicorn bust as well. Uh, but we'll see. No plans at the moment to buy that, but we'll, we'll see. There was also this thing from some new company. Uh, I haven't seen w what exactly the company is, but this is a uh, kind of same SD style version of the Eva 01 and a weapons tower set. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how this compares with the Sun Toys version of the Eva. Now, this is basically, as people have pointed out, it's just sort of like a model kit version of the Next Edge figure. Uh, the Sun Toys version was definitely larger than the Next Edge figure, so I don't know how this is going to compare in terms of the size. Uh, I would guess that this one was also this one will also be larger than the next edge figure, but uh, we'll be interesting to see how this compares in size to uh, the Sun Toys kit. This one I got I gotta say the Sun Toys kit was cool and it came with some cool weapons and stuff, but this one they're really doing it big with this weapons tree because the weapons tree does have some really amazing weapons. This not only comes with all the weapons in the weapons tree, it also a oh, weapons tree weapons tower. I think I've heard it called both. Uh, this also comes with that uh, really awesome Ava uh, big uh, sniper rifle that it uh, is used in anime, anyway. So Dragon Momoko, rest in peace, uh, did also make their own version of the weapons tower, so I'm guessing this is going to be pretty much that, but I, I don't know if, this, if they've scaled it down uh, to match the scale of this, because those would definitely be too big. If, if this kit is going to be anything near the size of the Sun Toys kit, then those, those weapons uh, on the Dragon Momoko kit of the weapons tower, uh, those are too big. So I don't know if they've basically scaled that down or if this kit is actually going to be pretty large. But right now we basically don't know anything about this except for just this one image here. This image looks cool, we can see a lot of cool stuff in the image, but uh, don't really know anything too much else about that. But what we did get some more information about here is the new Mechanicore kit. Uh, Mechanicore's new uh, 172nd scale version of the GPO2 Gundam, which they're calling the Pyrosaurus. That's a pretty stupid name, as many people have pointed out. But uh, stupid names, again, aside, basically as they're doing as usual, they have an ordinary version, a clear color version, and a premium version. So of the ordinary version, uh, there's 1,000 being made. Of the clear color version, they're doing 800. And of the premium version, they're doing 1,200. So total, only 3,000 of this kit being produced. That may sound like a lot, but that, those are going to disappear really quickly. So pre-order this if you want it. Uh, it says that it's coming at the end of August 2018, but I would say that's probably more likely to be October. <laughs> at least a month late. But yeah, you can pre-order. The uh, premium version does come with some stuff to make it a premium ver version. It does come uh, probably with some exclusive water slide decals, I would say. I haven't seen anything about that quite yet. But uh, the other thing is that it comes with a uh, heavy type beam rifle. So if that giant nuclear bazooka wasn't enough firepower for you, you also get this uh, new uh, heavy type beam rifle to go with that. It's a pretty interesting looking beam rifle. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. Now, of course, they've changed up a lot of the design of all the details everything. They make it in their own style. But one thing that they've changed as well is made a different 
parts for the head, so especially the face. Uh, it has a different kind of face to it where it actually has like a, a, a third camera eye like kind of right in the center. It's really interesting. I quite like that actually more than just the standard face. So I'm kind of into that. But overall, uh, the GPO2 is not really one of my favorite Gundam designs, but I, I, I'm into this. As you guys know, I like uh, Mechanicor kits, even though I never build them. Every time I get one and unbox, I always get comments like, when are you ever going to build this? Or you're never actually going to be able to build this? Or why did you buy this if you're not going to build it? The, the, the thing is that they're really limited, so if you think that you're ever going to want it, you have to buy it right away because you're not going to be able to get it later. Or you're going to have to pay, pay much, much more for it later on down the line as it's getting more and more rare. And if I ever get to the point where like, I just decide that I don't want the mechanic orchids that I have and I feel I do just want to sell them or something for whatever reason, um, I can sell them for at least what I paid for it, if not more. Like, I'm not gonna be like that asshole is gonna sell it for like three, four times what I paid for it, but I can very easily get my money back if I ever wanted to sell it. So anyway, it looks pretty cool. Right now all we're seeing is just a grayscale 3D renders of it, not really too much there to see. One thing that uh, they are advertising for this is like the gimmick that they're doing with this ver with this kit is that they're gonna have uh, some, a lot more armor, armor open hatch gimmicks uh, built into this kit. So that's really cool. I like that. I'm glad that they decided to do that. That's a really cool gimmick because one thing with these kits and I think why the clear versions of their kits have been pretty popular for some people is because there's so much detail under the armor and it's kind of a shame to cover it up. So it's cool that they've decided to um, give you the opportunity to show that off by integrating some open hatch uh, gimmicks into that. So you'd be able to have some of the armor opened up so you can see all that super awesome detail underneath there as well. So I like that. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing more about this kit uh, later on down the line. All right, now let's talk about some featured kits. Uh, because this video is already incredibly long, uh, why don't we just talk about three of these today and the rest I'll save them for next month. Let's do that. So the first one here is a Master Grade High New Gundam Stein, a custom build by Annabelle Sato. If you guys don't follow Annabelle Sato on Twitter, um, do that because he's really amazing and shares a lot of stuff on Twitter. A really great builder out of Japan and he does a lot of these custom builds based on the Master Grade Stein so he'll take a Master Grade Shinanju Stein and turn it into a, a Bau, or I, don't, I don't think he's done that, but uh, or a Jim 3 or all this different stuff that he's made uh, custom builds of like other mobile suits using the Shinanju Stein as a base so this one is obviously the Hainu and it looks very very cool now obviously for this, he's gone for just a kind of grayscale look. He's gotten rid of like the blue or like purplish blue aspects of the high new that you would see from the regular um, Master Grade of that or other versions of that. And also taken some creative liberties there with the shield as well, giving it this like really huge long sword that's like uh, hidden in this inside the shield there. So it's really cool. As with all of his builds, every time he does one of these uh, builds using the Stein as a base, it's so well done and it looks really, really good. Just his craftsmanship and just the cleanliness of his builds is so good. They always look so nice. I wouldn't say this is one of my favorites that he's done, uh, but it is a really cool, good one. I, just, I would basically just recommend you guys to just check out his Twitter page and see all the stuff that he has on there because he's got a lot of amazing builds. The next one here is an HG Miss Nightingale custom build by Yuit Hiro. So uh, this one, obviously, as you could imagine, is sort of uh, supposed to be like the Miss Sazabi. But this one is a Miss uh, Nightingale. So I think he's using the Miss Sasabi as a base kit here, but then uh, doing a whole bunch of other kit bashing and customizing and scratch building and all of that stuff. I'm sure going into making this really interesting build that you can see in like the work in progress photos is really quite interesting to look at uh, to see uh, where all these bits are coming from. There's there's parts of the Miss Sasabi in there, but there's a lot of stuff that he's just like. Uh, scratch build and uh, kit bash together here to make this. It's a really cool looking thing. I really love like little sub arms in the front skirts and all that too. Um, integrating kind of all the the key parts of what makes the Nightingale uh, into this very very different looking design. I mean very different looking from the original uh, Nightingale. I mean the original Nightingale is just huge, big, massive, but he's made this into like a, a much more lean and like um, agile looking mobile suit and it looks really cool so I like this quite a bit. For some reason the paint looks a little bit thick uh, on that. I'm not sure if that's just maybe the, the, the pictures but on some of the red parts the, the paint looks a little bit thick almost like it's spray canned uh, rather than airbrushed. I don't know but it's a really cool looking build and I like I said I just like that it's just a much more lean and uh, 
cool looking version of the the nightingale the nightingale is just too big and bulky for me for my personal taste but i like this this quite a bit it's a really cool interesting idea and the last one we'll talk about here is the hg novel gym 3 custom build by hanko so hanko here has basically taken the uh, hg gym gym actually and then 3d printed new parts for it uh to make it look like the novel gym 3 uh from gundam sentinel and it looks really really cool it almost looks like it's just like a resin conversion kit, but it's cool that he just 3D printed this stuff, so that's really awesome. Uh, I haven't seen any work in progress photos. I, I'd have to maybe check, maybe on his Twitter, there was maybe work in progress photos. I'd have to go back and look again, but these are just from uh, Modelers G, so it's just like the finished photos here, but it looks so good. I really like this quite a bit, and the colors are also really nice as well. That orange is, is definitely got some like fluorescent orange in there, and it's really super bright. And it looks really good against that just kind of dull uh, gray color. And it actually really gives me a good idea because as I mentioned maybe before, I think it was on, uh, as I mentioned before, I think maybe on Gumpla Talk, later on this year, I'm going to be working on uh, painting up the Master Grade Deep Striker as a commission for USA Gundam Store. And I've been, I wanted, been thinking about changing up the color scheme for that. And I was thinking about basically a color scheme, which is pretty much like this. Uh, changing the white to just like a very light gray and then changing like the orange to just like a, changing like the orangish red to like a brighter color of that so it's kind of very similar to this so this is kind of a good inspiration uh, for that bill I might think about that and it's also from Gundam Sentinel so there you go but anyway this is looking really good I really love the decals on this as well it's really nice decal placement on that there's a couple I maybe would disagree with a little bit uh, based on my personal taste but overall, it's a really cool looking build. Uh, as with all of these, you can check the links down below to see the images more closely for yourself if you want to take a look at those. Um, like I said, I have some more here, but I'll save those for next month's episode because this month's episode has obviously gone on pretty long because we had a lot of stuff to talk about with going to build divers out. What do you guys think about all the build diver stuff that was announced? Um, I'm pretty excited for that. There's some cool stuff coming. I'm interested to see uh, what those kits are like. So thank you guys so much for watching. As always, thank you to my Patreon supporters. Thank you to all you guys who have uh, been being very patient with me in this time while I've been very busy with the new baby. I haven't been able to put out quite as much content as I would like, as you guys would probably like as well. 